Divinity Original Sin 2 continues to deliver moment after moment of, wait, you can do that? So here are even more tips to help you do some real weird and wonderful stuff while you wander through Rivalon. Slipping on ice not only makes you look like a complete fool, but also means you'll miss a valuable turn in combat. A comment that Dorky Darko left on our last tips video points out that you can combine a handful of nails to any pair of boots to permanently add the benefit of grip. So now you can confidently walk over sheets of ice without the fear of falling on your godwoken ass. It's a good idea to have your party members carry a spare shield in their backpacks just in case they need an emergency top up to their shields. If your abilities are on cooldown or you need a boost in a pinch, you can use one action point to equip a shield, two action points to use the shields up ability, and then your last action point to switch back to your main weapon. Now this might cost you a turn, but if it means staying alive or taking some damage away from one of your weaker characters to tank it onto you, then it's a turn well spent. Sneaky Thief Smug McMuffin correctly points out that you can distract NPCs while pickpocketing them. It can be quite frustrating trying to pilfer some goods from someone's pouch when they keep walking around or even turning around and seeing you. You can actually easily remedy this by using one of your other characters. Select one of your other party members and engage in dialogue and talk nonsense to whatever NPC you want to steal from. This will keep the attention away from your pickpocketeer and on whoever's talking all the while your thief is helping themselves to a five finger discount. Since I always made sure my characters had as much weaponry as they could handle, I actually had no idea that this was a thing. But if one of your party members has an empty hand, they gain the Sucker Punch ability. The damage on this attack is actually pretty decent, but the main benefit is having the Knockdown ability. Using Sucker Punch, you can knock the enemy to the floor for one action point, letting yourself and the rest of your party well on them for an extra free turn. So if you've got some extra action points, it might be worth sheathing the sword and uppercutting a fool instead. There's a combination of skills that's so powerful you can almost call it overpowered. So obviously, we had to add it to this list. That is the combination of the Ruptured Tendons ability and the Chicken Claw ability. A great combination for anyone who's playing as a scoundrel. If you're not familiar, Ruptured Tendons will make a character take damage for every step they take, and every move they make. And Chicken Claw turns them into, you guessed it, a chicken. Funnily enough, an animal that knows how to do little other than run around in circles. After afflicting these two status effects on my enemies, I'd often watch their chicken selves just run themselves into a death, which was just oh so morbidly satisfying. After talking to a few people about the game, they expressed a desire to respect their character, apparently missing what lies in the hull of the Lady Vengeance. At the end of the first act, when you're traveling across the sea to Act 2, you may discover that the ship you're traveling on houses a magical mirror. This mirror allows you not only to change the appearance of your characters, but their attributes, abilities, and talents as well. So if you want to full spec someone into Lawmaster, or feel like you can drop a few finesse points so you can get some extra strength, or even just remake your character entirely, that option is completely open to you. Although you will have to buy a new set of skill books if you want to turn your Tank Inquisitor into a Geomancer. Another cheeky little advantage you can gain before a fight breaks out is to bring in your summons ahead of time. Once everyone has brought forth whatever beast they have, either enter the zone of aggro or start the conversation with whatever thug you had a bad feeling about, just in case they turn nasty. The summons will get some free turns as will the rest of your party, enabling to save the AP cost since they did it out of combat, as well as taking away some of the enemy aggro from the guys you actually care about, and all while being able to well on the bad guys right out of the gate. Now it's possible to double your party size if everyone summons something, so this definitely stacks the odds in your favour. So make sure a few of your guys have some summoning abilities or the odd summoning scroll. So those were seven more tips that you can use to your heart's content while playing through Divinity Original Sin 2. We always love hearing the clever tips you guys come up with, as well as your awesome Divinity Original Sin 2 stories. So if you have any tips or tales, then leave them in the comments. And for more Divinity Original Sin 2 stuff, then make sure you keep your eyes on GameSpot.com.